All right, I guess we can start the program here with Mike and Don on their trip back back across the Grand Canyon and Death Valley. All right. Um, tonight we're going to talk about backpacking across the Grand Canyon and some Death Valley car camping <clears throat> that we did on October 10th, 2015 to October 25th. Um, Donna and I kind of planned it from like a year ahead and then we found some other people to join us. So, Yeah, it, I should add that trying to get permits you have to have a permit for any overnight stay in the Grand Canyon, you know, whether it's one night or two weeks, whatever, you have to apply for it. And it is rather a challenge to get the permits because they get, uh, they get overwhelmed and with applicants and so they claim they run it as a lottery that they put all their names in a hat and just draw it out for what they have. Because the north, we were doing north rim to the south rim. There are a number of alternatives for south rim uh, trails that go down to the Colorado, but there's only one rim, uh, trail from the north rim that goes down to the Colorado where there's a bridge to cross. So that's another reason that that sort of limits uh, options. So. Here, if you guys uh, wanted to see, is where we started. This would be, uh, well, I guess I can't really show you where the state thing is, but yeah, up at the top you can see the North Rim Visitor Center. Far right. Yeah, right. Yeah, and then I, uh, I noted like where we stayed um, in our campgrounds. The last one's a little bit cut off, it's Hermit Creek. We spent six nights in the backcountry. Um, Three of them, I guess, would be considered kind of like corridor. somewhat, yeah, corridor. So there was like um, better bathrooms and like like nicer places. And then the other, like the last two or three nights, I guess, were off the beaten track. They were um, pretty remote, like with pit toilets. We had to filter our own water. It was um, different. Uh, we actually had a seventh night, but we ended up going up early for reasons I'll tell you about later um so here's yeah this map i just showed it before but this just shows that we came from all over pennsylvania then we went here and then uh yeah then we had to drive back here so we were in a few different states for that and then you saw that one so we'll jump ahead so here we are arriving in las vegas this is the vehicle being packed this is when there was only three of us there were still two more of us coming and we actually considered just getting a small car so bill <laughs> baxter planned this and i'm glad that he made the decision to get a van because it was full and i was responsible for having most of this stuff it seemed like <laughs> as you'll see later my tent's overpacked <laughs> yeah yeah it was so overpacked so we're driving through you know blah 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 touristy i'm not a big fan of las vegas so we spent kind of that day while we were waiting for everyone to assemble just kind of driving through the area and then finally about six o'clock in the evening we got on our way out of las vegas into the desert toward uh somewhere in Utah is where we stayed, I think the first St. night. St. George. St. George, that's where it was. So here we are, we got stuck in this huge traffic jam. Um, this is the hotel the next morning, this would be October 11th. <clears throat> and outside the window, we could see these beautiful mountains and then it was on the way toward the Grand Canyon. <coughs> so I'll just go through some of the slides here because it's pretty things we saw on the way. Um, different colored layered rocks were kind of going into the Colorado Plateau there and, and everything the elevation is constantly going up as we drove toward the Grand Canyon you'll start seeing signs will say like you know 3,000 feet 4,000 feet 5,000 feet oh yeah so we um as we went toward the Grand Canyon we um we saw these colorful rocks and we went up uh from like 3,000 feet to 8,000 feet we, we kept getting higher the, the North Rim is not nearly as visited as the South Rim. For one thing, it's uh, to get off the main highway, it's still 50 miles south <laughs> to get to the North Rim. And then it's a thousand feet higher elevation than the South Rim. So it's cold in the winter and it closes down. It really <coughs> runs from the middle of May to the first of November. <coughs> This is uh, on the way to the Grand Canyon. We stopped and saw this like uh, Native American setup where they had different jewelry and things that they made, and they were like so reasonable. Like this, there's a little canoe, 
with the, the, the second canoe, I don't know, one of those canoes, I ended up buying it, it was like $20, but if you saw something like that in the Grand Canyon, they'd be going for like $100, I mean, just all Native American stuff. Mm -hmm. So here we are, we're getting like, uh, I think we're in the park at this yeah. point. Uh, well, or at least we're in, probably we're in North Kaibab North, National Forest. The National Forest. Forest, that's what it was. Because the road goes <laughs> east-west and then you have to make yeah. a turn to go south. <laughs> And you go first through North Kaibab yeah. na a National Forest and then into uh, the National Park then you on get the back. North Rim. And so and then when we finally got there, this would be the evening on the 11th, which would be mm -hmm. our second day. We got uh, this campground up on top of the North Rim. Um, beautiful little tent spots. The tent spots were about this size throughout the trip. Very compact. Um, <laughs> they try to minimize uh, impact by concentrating everyone into a small area. Um, they tend to consider a permit even though it's good for six people to be good for like three tents or something So yeah, we were really tight in some places And this is yeah when you walked out the back of the great uh, the tent site Then you were looking out over the canyon and one of the side branches This here is one of the most beautiful trails that we did like to get acclimated and stuff um, Bill and I kind of got a headache and like we're peeing all night and stuff because of the altitude shock you go from like 2,000 at the hotel to this massively high 80 to 8,500 foot elevation. So we did 10 miles on this, this trail here, Wood Frost Trail. Um, five miles out and five miles back. It overlooks the North Rim. Just amazing view of everything. And then I put two of them together sometimes. It saves time. <laughs> The, when you look from the North Rim compared to the South Rim, all the monuments or uh, rock formations are much closer to the North Rim. So the, the view, even though you're looking at some of the same scenery from two different angles, it looks quite different These, uh, there than it would be on the South Rim where they all look so much further away. Those peaks in the distance, they rise up to over 10 or 11,000 feet. Those are the San Francisco peaks and you can only see them from the North Rim on a very clear day because um, they're probably 60 or 70 miles away. They're uh, closer to Flagstaff. Yeah, probably. they're kind of soft, I guess, is where they would be, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then uh, we had uh, a lot of logs like this in our in our campground on top, and I liked walking on them, and people put rocks on them. The trees were so big, um, yeah, bigger than anything in Cook's Forest even, it looked like, you know, and we're not even in, like, a special tree area. Uh, so we got uh, this little uh precipice here i mean it probably drops like hundreds and hundreds of feet under there it's like a wild e. coyote uh drop <laughs> and then these beautiful little um the, the flowers and the plants are just so uh, adapted to growing in such harsh uh, conditions and they're so beautiful and you'll see things just grow right out of rock <clears throat> You know, the end of the trail there has a big panorama that overlooks a lot of the the rock formations that you see at a distance from the south road. And so we are uh, <clears throat> at the end of the trail here and we're just kind of stopping, taking a look at the map, getting ready to go back. We wanted to get back by dark and we got back like just after dark so it worked out pretty good. Um, now you got Donna, Laura and Bill. Um, the only one in that, not in that picture, is Paul, but he'll be in some other pictures later. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got, now we're heading back. Woodfoss Point is uh, what they call the area at the end of the trail, I guess. The, the last but it's one. rated as having the best view on the North Rim. The best view. There's some other places <clears throat> that are also really nice, but yeah. that's the one that has the biggest panorama. And this, uh, yeah, this is something that you have to you have to really hike to. It's and it's, and it's worth the trip. That's for sure. And these trees are just so. And then as the um, the pictures I took on the way back kind of look different because the light changes and you. Um, you start seeing all these different reds and stuff coming out of the canyon. Um, then we saw the squirrel up here. This is the best picture I could get of it. This is a North Kaibab squirrel. 
It's uh, a squirrel that only lives in the north rim of the Grand Canyon and nowhere else in the world. Um, the other squirrels that we saw later in the Grand Canyon are rock squirrels and they look like little prairie dogs kind of. Um, but yeah, this one is special. <laughs> So there we are uh, looking down. I don't know if they call it the transept or something. It's like down toward the, the middle, like way at the bottom, thousands of feet down. There's a trail, I think, or a creek down there. <laughs> this is really getting close to sunset. The sunset was about six o'clock. It, was, it got dark really early when we were there. <clears throat> the next day is the 12th. This is the layover day. So you did an adventure, Donna. Yeah, well, on, on the layover, well, we had, it wasn't layover in the sense of having a permit, but yeah. we had an extra day at the North Rim because we also knew that we were getting close to the end of the North Rim time period. Yeah. We decided to do our, our car shuttle before uh, we went into the canyon rather than do it in reverse coming back because by that time it would be almost everything closed up <coughs> and even the schedule for the car shuttle was reduced by that time. So that day I drove our, our van all the way around. You have to drive north up to Jacobs Lake, which is 50 miles, and then you drive all around to Marble Canyon and then south and then back. It's about uh, 175 miles to get to the south rim. And then you get the, well, yeah, of course we pre-planned it. We had our reservation and you, we get the uh, a, a van, you know, a shuttle van, small bus thing that uh, will drove me all the way back. Well, it took it took the day, <laughs> took the day to do that. Well, she was doing all that. We kind of lolly gagged around camp and just did some little short hikes on top mm -hmm. on these like real touristy trails, like one mile, one and a half mile hikes, and and hung around the lodge and, and went to different shops and different things. Listened to some park ranger programs. Um, this is the lodge at the North Rim. It's real. Uh, it kind of like blends in with the local rocks and later you'll see um, there's fossils that are in the building itself that they that you can see in the rocks so it's pretty amazing these trees are just so uh, gnarly and old and they're just growing out of the rocks I just love those trees <laughs> that's got to be like a thousand years old I bet this is a thing. <clears throat> They have um, on top like this real nice paved trail, so it's just like, I mean, you could push like uh, strollers or a wheelchair or something. I mean, it's just accessible to everyone, so we just went down that trail and I climbed up on those rocks, which was a lot of fun. The benchmark from USGS. Here I am uh, up on top of the rocks looking down at Paul. He's that guy standing kind of in the middle there looking up. Uh, and there I am. I made him take my picture on the rocks. Now we're going back to uh, listen to some ranger programs. I believe there was one at three. It was about park geology. And um, the lady explained about this book called Carving the Grand Canyon, which was what her talk was based on. So I ended up buying the book. But um, then I saw the fossils in the wall. Um, you can see uh, like a fossil tree, it looks like, in that middle brick kind of going down in some sort of circular thing just all different kinds of fossils just into the building now this is the picture of um the kaivab squirrel at the museum so this is the squirrel that we saw uh in the wild and i'm glad i got a picture we did see them other times but that was the only time i actually got the picture this one's dead so i knew i could <laughs> confirm that this was actually the squirrel that i saw <laughs> see it more in, not in camera flash yeah. you, you have to peek through that little hole to, to and like <laughs> see him as he's hidden so then this park ranger is the second park ranger um the first one i had cut out her picture because it wasn't as sharp um but she was the geology when this lady was talking about condors um and there the condors um the, the news was that somebody i guess had accidentally shot a condor thinking it was a legal game bird uh in the area at some point the preceding week and uh that was big news. I mean, they were going to jail, I think, for a felony or something because they're very protected. Um, now, we are on to, um, I believe, the day that we're going to start going into the canyon. That would be the 13th, I think. Uh, this is my backpack. 
um, this is 72 pounds or something. We weighed all our packs. Um, but uh, I, I am used to like the portage packs from the canoe trips, and that's nothing because you just carry them a little bit and you go in the canoe, but that's too much for a backpacking trip. And I couldn't fit anything in my backpack because it was too small. They told me that it, I... It wasn't too small. You just said too much. <laughs> <laughs> too much. Well, there's Donna. Donna had too much, too. But her, her too, too much, much was too. less than my too much. I mean, <laughs> we were both proportioned to our body weight. We were both about as bad. <laughs> uh, this guy, I had, Except I only had too much food. You, you had, had too much food. I had too much everything. I had a tent that weighed about 16 pounds, which fell apart, and I was grateful for that because I ended up buying a replacement for a quarter of the cost that was four pounds at the end. So this is Bill. His pack was about 60 or 62 pounds, and uh, he's a uh, uh, like professional backpacker guy, so he knew what he was doing. Uh, he had a good backpack, too. There's Paul. <laughs> he had a backpack there, but I don't know where it is. North Kaibab Trail. So now we're starting down into our um, descent into the Grand Canyon. There's Laura. She's all gun ho ready to go. She was the fastest one among us finishing every day. But first. she was the baby. Yeah, and she had a super light backpack. Like, yeah, she was just ultra light. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're looking there. Now we're sitting down here, and um, you gotta watch for these mules. They come up and down all the time. People sometimes don't like to hike down there, so they pay more money, and they take these mules. Um, they also carry supplies up from Phantom Ranch and deliver the mail to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. So we went through different climate zones as we went down. We were up in this nice pine, uh, the aspen and pines, that, and we didn't see that at all after we got out of that. We started going into different um, areas. Here we are going down the trail. Bill on top, Laura on the bottom, and Cocachino Overlook. So this is probably maybe a thousand feet down into the canyon from the north rim. In pretty <coughs> short distance too. Yeah. Um, this here is the geology section. The top ones are the Kaibab and the Toro Wheat Formation. So those would have been the first two formations we walked down. Those are only on the north rim. Then the Cocachino sandstone is the top of the south rim. And then that's yeah where we had to get to. And as we go down through these rocks, they get older and older. Every step they say is like a hundred thousand years or something. And the ones at the very bottom are volcanic and they just look completely different and they're just uh, really neat. So we're going down. There's these hoodoos. Um, they look like ghosts or I don't even know what. They're just like robots <coughs> standing there. Um, and we're now into the hermit shale. It's Permian age. This is 245 to 286 million year old rocks getting older. We got the uh, looking up at the Cocachino sandstone. Then here is at about 66, 6700 feet, we reached the first rest area, one of the bathrooms, and we stopped and had lunch and used the facilities and all that. And I couldn't take my backpack off without help because it was too much. Or maybe I did take it off, but I had to like, wait, wait, don't leave me. Like you have to put it back on again. So <laughs> after the first day, I really didn't take my backpack off until about the third day when I ate enough of the food that I could put it back on myself. <laughs> we went through. Oh, uh, at the bottom, yeah. There was vending. Only, I mean, at, only vending. at Bright Angel. Yeah, at the or, or the um, Phantom Ranch. Phantom Ranch. It wasn't vending. It was full service. But th that was the little cave we went through in the rocks. Um, a little mm -hmm. tunnel. Uh, and we had gotten down. I mean, that drop you see where for where the rim is down to this first rest area. Mm -hmm. We'd only been on the trail maybe an hour. Maybe uh -huh. a little over that. It shows how fast you start coming down. You come down. down so fast going up. It's a different story. So here is a, a human mule. That's me. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it just shows how bad it was. And it was unbalanced and everything was sagging and drooping. And, oh, Lord. <clears throat> so here's it's everyone right else sitting down do. having their nice lunch. And, of course, I stood like that and tried to get some food into my mouth. <laughs> But I ended up hiking more than anyone else in the end. I'm like slow, but I kept going. Like I hiked in the night one time and went up and did like extra miles. Um, so we come down more. This is probably getting below 5,500 feet ish. Um, and there's a nice little bridge there. Rocks are getting really red. 
uh, the agave plants started to appear and uh, we started seeing different cactuses and different things that we didn't see on the north rim because we're getting into more drier areas and hotter areas so these uh, desert plants are starting to come up. <clears throat> this is uh, just a little like a natural arch starting to form in the uh, red rocks there and there's all these little like overhangs and I mean that whole trail it just like went under like the overhanging rock like that. There's some uh, uh, prickly pear. Mm -hmm. the, there's like three or four different kinds of prickly pear I found out. The ones that are really prickly, the ones that are really really prickly, and then there's ones that look like they're not prickly but they have all these little micro prickers so they're worse than anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's, there's different it's like ones. A stiff fur. Yeah, and I touched it just like, oh that's not prickly and it was real prickly. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the uh, unconformity. So this is just showing you the line where like two um, rocks come together and there's just missing rocks. So at some point everything eroded away and then it deposited again and you'll see these kind of signs throughout the Grand Canyon. Um, lines, oh, so there were lines. Um, the only evidence of civilization, I guess, besides the fact that someone made a trail is that you'd see power lines and you'd see uh, various things kind of coming into the canyon and it was from the north um, that delivers the power to Phantom Ranch. But other than that, it's pretty uh, wild and pretty untouched. Oh, wait. That works too. Roaring Springs Cottonwood. We went and checked out Roaring Springs. I think Laura and Bill might have walked on and just kept going and Donna, me and Paul stopped to go see Roaring Springs because uh, I don't want to miss anything. You're only there once. This uh, is the best picture I could get of this raven. He's, uh, my camera wouldn't focus on him because he's back there, but yeah. We've got this uh, here. And I just like zoomed in on it and then zoomed in on it some more. <laughs> just it's so many rocks. Waterfall. Now it's really getting kind of late. Everything's getting shadowy. And then there's this rock formation. It's uh, some sort of debris flow that it's just all mangled up. We saw that. Some fossils. Looks like uh, root casts or something. Uh, more of the uh, debris flow. Now we're into this yellow. I guess this would be the, uh, oh, what's that middle form? The middle thing that we walked on, the platform, the Tonto. We're into like mm -hmm. the Tonto rocks now, um, which is a big flat platform that forms the, the, the inner canyon, between the inner canyon and the outer canyon. It's kind of this yellowish greenish rock below the red rock, so we had to go through that. Um, and the prickly pears just kept getting more abundant. Here we're down at the rest area again. This is the next rest area after the first rest area, and it was like three more hours before we got to this one. <coughs> and these things started popping up. These are some kind of I don't know what the name of these cactuses are, but they're not barrel cactuses. They're like in between. Then the first night was spent at Cottonwood Campground. Um, it's getting pretty far down there, but we still had about seven miles to go to get to the Colorado River. The distance from the North Rim to the Colorado River is maybe 14 miles, and it's seven or eight miles on the other side to get to the South Rim, so you spend a lot more time descending on this side of the canyon. Well, because it has that extra thousand it's feet of extra, elevation. Yeah, that, and then it gen it's more gentle. Um, it, there's less switchbacks, and, and well, at the beginning there's a lot of switchbacks, but it does take... Uh, just this general or slope for the most part. <clears throat> so we went to see uh, Ribbon Falls. Ribbon Falls was kind of neat. It was a triple waterfall, <clears throat> and I. Uh, it was a side. It was a side <coughs> trip off the North Colorado. <clears throat> I uh, went back there, behind it, to see the third waterfall. You have to go behind it to see the third one because it's hidden up top. There's lower falls, upper falls, and upper upper falls. Um, this thing. It, Looks like it's out of like Lord of the Rings or something. I don't know. It's just crazy stuff growing in there. Now it is here. You can see all three waterfalls. That one at top, the top is is the highest one. Um, then there's plants growing out of rocks. Just crazy plants. And now we're into the uh, the inner canyon granite rocks. These are where the rocks are a billion years old. Some of them are as old as almost two billion years old. And there's a box canyon 
the box canyon everyone's saying watch out for the box canyon you get in the box canyon early it'll be 150 degrees in there it wasn't bad it was like 90 degrees in there and it was really pretty and i spent a lot of time in there because i didn't want to rush well we through. were really not only wasn't i guess there's a couple <clears throat> reasons that it's known for being like an oven is because first of all the walls come in so it's, <coughs> it's sort of tight second of all because this is down where the rocks are uh, dark and heat absorbing and uh, and also you don't usually get much breeze so mm -hmm. when it hotter parts of the season it's much hotter than the surrounding area but we were fortunate it wasn't that hot and there was actually a breeze blowing through which is totally unusual but that's like the last three miles or so before you get to Bright Angel Campgrounds. <laughs> so I'm getting through there. Um, these things here look like Buckeyes, but they're not. I don't know what they are. <laughs> um, but yeah, these rocks, they just get more and more impressive as you get down there. <clears throat> and the other thing going through the box is, I mean, the whole way the North Cobb pretty much follows Bright Angel Creek the whole way down. So where you're in, you can see here in the box, you're very close to the stream. It's <coughs> right along. So it's yeah. really quite scenic you're with the walls right on each side of the stream and <laughs> there you are. So this here, uh, again, this is, I was always the slowest one because um, getting to camp at least because I had so much weight. <coughs> I think, I, <coughs> what does it say here? I averaged 0. 0.8 miles an hour. Um, so that one, yeah, I wasn't so happy there, but yeah, uh, I still tried to have one. <laughs> then, um, so this is interesting, so I was hiking and some lady said that her friend had to be flown out like later in the day, um, had to be rescued and like, did you see the helicopter coming in and blah blah blah, I'm like, yep, I did see the helicopter and I took a picture, so, so this is um, associated with someone being rescued, I guess, I think they might have broke something and needed to get to a hospital. <clears throat> now we're out of the box canyon, getting close to the camp. Is that still work? Is it still work? Okay, sorry about that. So the video stopped. <laughs> See, here's the Colorado River. So here I am down by the Colorado River. <clears throat> In this yeah, because Bright Angel Campgrounds <laughs> is a little bit. It's sort of between Phantom Ranch where the dining room area is in the cottages and so forth yeah. but not quite about a mile up from the river we're at like 2300 and some feet elevation i like this sign because it says like modern perspectives and then it shows donna like looking in like through the sign and stuff <laughs> so then we uh was it the hot down there at the river? Oh, it was like, it felt like it was 88 or something at 11 in the morning. It was hot and it was humid already, and it wasn't even that late in the morning. Like, did I couldn't... Go, did you go to the water? water um, we didn't go in there. No, um, I don't know if there were signs telling you not to. There were some pretty crazy rapids there. I know you wouldn't want to be in the wrong place. I mean, like, there was an eddy where yeah. the uh, rafts had pulled in, so but yeah, otherwise... It's a lot of rafts. You know, otherwise there even places that looked fairly uh, not that rough when you saw the rap uh, the rafts go through them, you could see that the rapids were much stronger than they looked just looking at them visually. Was the water as brown as it is in the photographs? Uh, it was pretty brown. It actually turned different colors depending on the weather. I mean, at one point it was more of a red color. I think um, after a certain flood. Uh, event that happened later in the trip um, has a lot of sediment in it. Mm -hmm. But <coughs> this is the part where there the only bridges are that cross the river, and there's the silver bridge and the black there's bridge. There's the other bridge, yeah. I think we went over the other bridge the next day or something when we left there, and so this was the big bridge. Um, and we were. Uh, we're heading up now on the south side of the... Uh, but this is just our day hike. This day. is a day hike. And uh, mm -hmm. the, so we all went different distances. Bill went uh, not much further than this. Donna kept going with me further. We're getting higher up. There's Bill. He's going to... Or I mean, I'm not, it's not Bill. That's Paul. Paul. 
fault. He, he's turning around right there. Um, yeah, he went, went over on the river yeah. trail. We went up the we South Kai Bow. Up further. Um, uh, up to the Tonto Trail. Yeah, yeah that's what it was. And Laura and Paul, <coughs> Laura and Bill went um, somewhere else. I don't even know where they went. No, I think we saw Bill, but I don't know. Laura did her own thing completely. Here's some fossil ripples. Um, now we're getting up uh, probably a thousand feet or more above the Colorado River. You can see a little bit of the Brown River. Yeah, to the just side a little. There. Panoramic picture. Uh, and on the other side. And then there's more of those fossilized ripple slabs. There's another helicopter. Um, I don't really know what that helicopter's doing.